The topic is trauma from occlusion. The trauma from occlusion is defined according to Aubin and Glickman as uh, occlusal forces when they exceed the adaptive capacity of the tissues or a tissue injury that results. Now, this resultant tissue injury is defined as trauma from occlusion. I would like to define it, redefine it for you all again. Trauma from occlusion is defined as when occlusal forces exceed the ab adaptive capacity of the periodontal tissues, the tissue injury results. Now, this resultant tissue injury is defined as trauma from occlusion. The various types of trauma from occlusion, you have the ones depending on the onset and duration. You have your acute trauma from occlusion and you have your chronic trauma from occlusion. Acute meaning due to some abrupt changes in the occlusion, there is a development of trauma to the periodontal tissues. Probably biting suddenly on a, uh, on a stone or maybe a overhanging or uh, over contoured restorations or a high point on a restoration or a crown. And then, depending on the uh, cause, you have your primary trauma from occlusion and secondary trauma from occlusion. The primary trauma from occlusion means due to the alterations in the occlusal forces. And then secondary trauma because of the reduced capacity of the periodontal tissues. The signs and symptoms include clinical and radiographic signs. Let's see the clinical signs and symptoms. These include excessive tooth pain. You have tenderness on percussion, tooth mobility. In cases of severe cases, you have periodontal abscess formation, sometimes even cemental tears. Infrabony pockets are the major, one of the important signs of your trauma from occlusion. Apart from that, furcation involvement, attrition, pathologic migration, and frematis test is positive. What is your radiographic changes? You have the PDL widening. That is, your widening of your PDL is seen in a radiograph. You can see thickening of your lamina dura or your alveolar bone proper, a vertical pattern of bone loss, okay, or an intrabony defect. And then you have radiolucency and condensation of your alveolar bone. And root resorption can also be seen in case of your trauma from occlusion as a radiographic changes. Let's see what are the histological changes. You have three stages. Your histology can be grouped into three stages. One is a stage of injury, stage of repair, and then stage of adaptive remodeling. In stage of injury, what do you see? If you can see the picture which is coming up here, which has uh, come up in the next slide, it means to say that during the stage of injury, there is a constant pressure on your periodontium and then the periodontium is starting to lose itself. Whereas the, comes, the second stage is a stage of repair. You know whenever there is an injury, there is a constant repair of the body. Now the body is trying to repair the damaged resorptive areas of the uh, alveolar bone. In the process, if the body is not able to cope up to your uh, repair process, then comes your third stage that would be your adaptive remodeling, meaning the periodontium is trying to readapt to the occlusal forces, to the, uh, to the abnormal occlusal forces. What is the role of TFO in progression of periodontitis? Two concepts have been put forward. One is the Glickman's concept and then the other is the Wayhawks concept. According to the Glickman's concept, it's also called as zone of, uh, uh, the Glickman's concept of co-destruction. He says that you have two zones. One is a zone of irritation and one is a zone of co-destruction. And he says that it is just purely not trauma from occlusion that can be the result of uh, periodontal diseases. He says that it can be included with your plaque accumulation. When you have trauma from occlusion, if, you, if your trauma from occlusion is a major cause of periodontal diseases, you have the direction of your forces would be directly into your uh, periodontal ligament and then they go to your alveolar bone and they start resolving the alveolar bone. Now, if you also have a plaque induced kind of a gingivitis, what happens is because of the plaque induced gingivitis, the inflammatory process from the gingiva will enter your alveolar bone or reach the alveolar bone directly so that is the pathway of inflammation if it is plaque induced so i repeat if it is a plaque induced kind of an inflammatory pathway what happens is the inflammation spreads from your gingiva into the connective tissue of the gingiva thus directly entering into your alveolar bone and then it enters your pdl that is your periodontal ligament whereas in case of your trauma from occlusion there are direct forces which are falling onto your periodontal ligament and then from here it is distributed to your alveolar bone and there is a resorption of your alveolar bone now if these two area if these two zones are occurring together then what results is what is called as your zone of co-destruction meaning both the processes are getting clubbed together and they are leading to the destructive process of your periodontium According to Wayhawk's concept, he concluded, he did some uh, studies on autopsies and then he, uh, he concluded that angular defects 
and infrabony pocket occur only often at periodontal sites of teeth that are not affected by trauma from occlusion. Angular defects occur when subgingival plaque of one tooth has reached a more apical level than the microbiota on the neighboring tooth. Now, what is this buttressing bone formation? I told you your body is trying to repair or remodel itself to the occlusal, uh, altered occlusal forces. Now, during this process, the bo body tries to repair. It forms a kind of condensation of the alveolar bone, and this is called as a process called as buttressing bone formation. You have two types of buttressing bone formation. You have a central buttressing bone formation, and you have peripheral bone buttressing formation. Now, this peripheral bone buttressing formation results in the thickening of the alveolar margins, and this is referred to as what is called as lipping. Now, frequently it is associated with osseous craters and angular defects. Now, that would complete the entire topic on trauma from occlusion. Thank you. The topic is pathologic tooth migration. Now, this pathologic tooth migration, as the term denotes, it's kind of a pathology wherein the tooth migrates from one place to another. And the scenario can be because, this scenario can be because as a sequelae of any of the periodontal diseases. Whenever there is a periodontal disease, there is an extra kind of a burden on the periodontium as a result of the infection and loss of alveolar bone. Plus, a certain forces are exerted onto if certain forces are exerted onto the onto the tooth or onto the periodontium wherein the periodontium won't be able to take in all the forces now this will lead to what is called as an alveolar bone loss or a connective tissue breakdown once the alveolar starts alveolar bone starts resorbing the tooth tends to become mobile or it tends to she uh, moved from one place to another because of the resorption pattern. Now let's see what are the factors. What, now under this topic, let's consider how we have to deal with this topic. Now first would be the definition for it. Then, let, then let's talk what are the factors which are responsible for keeping the teeth in place and what happens as a result of uh, the, the loss of the factors that ha are useful in maintaining the tooth in position. Now, according to the definition, uh, the uh, pathologic tooth migration can be defined or it refers to tooth displacement that results when the balance among the forces that or the, fa the balance among the factors that maintain the tooth in one position are altered or the or, are altered and then this will re or disturbed due to periodontal disease. I will redefine it refers to tooth displacement that results when the balance among the factors that maintain the physiological tooth position are disturbed due to periodontal disease. Now let's see what are the features when you when you see a pathologic migration what are the features most of the times the pathologic migration occurs most of the time in the anteriors but it does occur even in the posterior areas but then most of the times it's limited or restricted only to your anteriors probably because it is well more noticed by the patients who come up come up to you with a chief complaint that his or her teeth are migrating or moving from one place to another if you see the chronic form of periodontitis most of the times this kind of a pathologic migration occurs over a period of time it means because your chronic periodontitis is a kind of a slow progressing disease but if you see your uh, aggressive form of periodontitis this pathologic migration can be seen within a period of just one or two months that the patient comes to you and he says that my teeth are moving and it, I have been noticing this movement just since a month. So that gives you an excellent clue to diagnosis. And apart from that, one of the typical feature of aggressive periodontitis would be a distal labial migration of your central incisor with a concomitant diastema formation. Now this also can be a good clue to the diagnosis with the other findings of aggressive, with the other history and the other findings of your aggressive periodontal disease. Now, apart from the uh, frequently occurring area being the anteriors, the other features include that the teeth may move in any direction they want. Either they can move labially, palatally, distally or even mesially or else they can even extrude sometimes or even they can be kind of an intrusion. Now, most of the times the sequelae of tooth migration would be tooth mobility followed by rotation of the tooth. So the tooth either gets rotated from one place or from into an, a different direction or it starts moving mainly because of the infected periodontium which results in ultimately resulting in a alveolar bone loss. Now, apart from that, if the pathologic migration occurs in an incisal or an occlusal direction, then you term it as what is called as extrusion. There are how, what is the pathogenesis? I told you for the pathologic migration to occur, there should be certain things which are 
hampered or which are affected by due to the disease process now what are these factors or the two major factors which are responsible normally to maintain the physiological tooth position you have two important factors one is the health and the normal height of the periodontium if the normal height if the if the health of the periodontium is uh, diseased if the periodontium is diseased or if the normal height height is weakened or the normal height is reduced because of the periodontal disease any of the reasons this can cause pathologic tooth migration the second one or the major important factor which helps in maintaining the physiological tooth position would be the forces that are exerted on the teeth and if you have excessive forces for example your occlusal forces or excessive orthodontic tooth forces then also it can lead to bone loss and then for the pathologic kind of a tooth migration you don't want the tooth to move in that direction but then it results in a migration because of the excessive forces and leading to a weakened kind of a periodontium so the health and the normal height of the periodontium become one of the most important factor one of the most important factor in keeping the tooth in position a tooth with a weakened periodontal support is unable to withstand the forces and it moves away from the opposing force and then the abnormality in pathologic migration rests within the weakened periodontium the second factor is the forces that are exerted on the teeth now suppose you have an unreplaced missing tooth so you you have a missing tooth and the patient doesn't get it replaced so what happens over a period of time as a natural phenomenon your teeth will start migrating in order to try to close the gap that is left behind as a result of a missing tooth so what happens suppose you miss you have a missing central incisors so what happens is that you either the, the other side of your lateral and the other other central incisor will try to move mesially in order to close the gap and then the lower incisor might start supra erupting in order to again trying to close the gap and causing a kind of a weakened periodontium there and then leading to tooth a uh, pathologic tooth migration and then one fine day it can lead to tooth mobility and then loss of the tooth now, apart from that the other forces that are exerted on the teeth can be also due to failure to replace your first molars and other causes can be because of the pressure constant pressure from the tongue or the pressure from the uh, granulation tissue of the diseased periodontium now what would be the treatment before we would end the session what would be the treatment for pathologic tooth migration now, the pathologic tooth migration the treatment would depend definitely on the amount or the on the prognosis uh, rather than telling the amount just the amount of bone support remaining we would say the prognosis of the tooth okay so it mainly depends on the generalized or the overall prognosis of the general dentition and then the areas which are affected and then the areas which are affected by pathologic tooth migration maybe probably you have to look into the remaining alveolar bone support if the tooth is uh, if 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 the tooth can be retained or if there is any kind of a furcation involvement the grade of mobility related to the pathologic tooth migration and the condition of the the generalized condition of the periodontium patient cooperation patient compliance and uh his systemic conditions or systemic and environmental factors also do play a role in first um, in planning your treatment for pathologic tooth migration so once you have confirmed that this tooth can be saved now what are the things that you can talk suppose you have an adequate bone support remaining bone support probably what you can do is you can do a thorough scaling and root planing and if periodontal surgery is needed go ahead with the periodontal surgery if regenerative procedures are needed then then maybe bone grafts or a gtr membrane that is a guided tissue regeneration membrane or a combined effect uh, com or combination of your bone grafts and gtr membrane or any kind of a growth factors can be incorporated as regenerative materials or regenerative techniques for your periodontal flap surgery and apart from that once if you have an adequate remaining bone support and the other other uh, the generalized condition of the teeth are fine maybe you have to look into if it's the anterior tooth you have to consider the is the uh, gaining back of the aesthetics so probably you can wait for a period of time if you have an adequate bone support go ahead with an orthodontic movement and try to close the teeth apart from that you can but then the periodontal disease should be under well controlled condition before you can attempt any kind of a orthodontic tooth movement apart from that we can also go about the other cosmetic treatments like 
like your any of the uh, laminates veneers or you can do a, a fixed partial denture or probably if the prognosis of the tooth is very poor probably you can pull out the tooth and then go ahead with the re with replacement with an implant that would conclude your pathologic tooth migration thank you